mountains, rivers, fields, castles, and churches. Almost every nation has all of these items. However, what if the entire nation is just 25 by 6 kilometers? What could you possibly fit in tiny Liechtenstein? How are people living in this place? And what sort of bizarre artworks adorns the capital's soul and thus principal square? Let's find out! Nestled between Switzerland and Austria, Liechtenstein is a tiny state, or principality, be more precise. Mountains cover a quarter of the country's area. However, despite this small size, there are up to 11 communes and towns, with enough space for a university, numerous saucer fields, and even a whole ski resort. Since Liechtenstein lacks an airport or a railroad, the only way to get there from nearby nations is taking a bus. I arrived from Switzerland, and the first thing I saw were the black license plates with the peculiar FL letters. However, the reason for them was discovered very quickly. As German is the official language in this area, the Principality of Liechtenstein sounds and is spelled like this. Fürstentum Liechtenstein. The numbers make things much more intriguing. Due to the small population, 39,000, license plates are really issued according to the sequence in which cars are registered, with each plate having a unique number. For instance, the Prince of Liechtenstein has the first number. We travel by bus for a short while, before arriving at the tiny Vaduz, the capital. Situated on the banks of the Rhine, the boundary between Liechtenstein and Switzerland, it lies at the center of the nation. Like all of the bridges in the principality, this old Rhine bridge, known in German as Alte Rheinbrücke, is owned by both nations. Signposts are located in the middle to help you remember where you are. It was a different kind of amusement to ask folks who were crossing the bridge where they were heading. I'm in Liechtenstein right now. Now I find myself in Switzerland. And now I find myself back in Liechtenstein. Yeah, this video will have a ton of dumb jokes about this. Start counting. This small state is nestled in an exceptionally picturesque valley. Liechtenstein offers a lovely opportunity to enjoy the beauty from anywhere in the country, as it is surrounded by the Alps on all sides. Locals race bicycles, rollerblades, and stroll along the nice promenade along the river. When the weather abruptly warmed up at the end of April, some people even began sunbathing on the grass, while others used the opportunity to check the water's temperature. It's not unexpected that the suddenly intense light burned my face. Just take a peek at my meal. It's a bar of chocolate, sincerely. I'm now in the nation's capital. It's time to take a literally stroll through the center and admire the local modernist architecture. Particularly in Vaduz, you can sense the zest that makes the nation distinct. Check out this pedestrian area that is completely composed of yellow bricks. This is the structure where the small local government convenes. One of the rare locations where the principality's big coat of arms is on display. Ironically, this sole steam train in the entire nation is just the tourist attraction. You can go along a kilometer-long path with the main attractions for 10 francs. One of them, the Cathedral of Saint Florin, is right in front of you. Legend has it that he once turned water into wine. 
half of Liechtenstein enjoys hearing the bells ring at midday from this comparatively little cathedral, which serves as the nation's principal cathedral. The prince's golden crown is affixed to the nation's flag, which is flown with pride in the square. The crown was added after learning that Haidt had adopted an identical blue-red flag. This brings us to yet another unique aspect of Liechtenstein. Really bizarre artworks, installations and monuments. What about a mask on a seat that was given the moniker African King? Or the enormous nude woman dozing out in the center of the plaza? And then there are the peculiar-looking horses directly beneath the city hall's windows. It's a fantastic puppet structure with adorable painted windows and lovely shutters. And naturally enough, it has a clock. Don't panic if you feel like you're being followed when you're wandering about the dudes. These guys are merely searching the horizon for something intriguing. Regretfully, one of the nation's most valuable assets, Vaduz Castle, the Prince of Liechtenstein's home, has been entirely engulfed in scaffold for a while and is currently undergoing restoration. Although access to the interior is restricted to those who have personal invitations, Anyone used to be able to take an exterior tour of the castle. A small replica of the castle is placed next to the tourist information center, presumably to ease the disappointment of tourists who will not be able to visit it. A souvenir stamp for your passport can be obtained at the souvenir shop, along with magnets, coins and other trinkets, ah. for a fee starting at 3 francs. Since Liechtenstein is part of the Schengen Zone, there are simply no border checkpoints. However, you may have the stamp for just 3 francs, thus invalidating your travel passport. No! Since I didn't get to see the dude's castle, I spent the next day taking a 20-minute bus ride to the opposite side of the nation, to view Gutenberg Castle. I kept seeing odd road signs along the route, reminding me that we were actually in Liechtenstein, not elsewhere. Liechtenstein is located to the left and to the right. Perched on a 70 meter tall hill, Gutenberg is surrounded by terraces dotted with vines around. Regrettably, access to the castle is restricted, however, you are still able to ascend to the lower courtyard where you can perch on a charming seat and observe the tranquil town's daily activities. Liechtenstein seems to have a lot of fields for such a little nation. The locals are absolutely nice. They're kind, smiley and generally decent. The Liechtenstein cows here, I must admit, were a little too interested in me. I'm not sure if they are just curious or if they do like me. The donkeys, however, showed me zero attention at all. As you stroll around and take in this leisurely, almost village-like atmosphere, it's hard to think Liechtenstein is the primary hub for finance and commerce in Europe. In a country with 39,000 inhabitants, there are almost 70,000 registered businesses. One of the main pillars of the local economy is banking. 
as Liechtenstein is a very popular offshore destination. The preferred currency is the Swiss franc. The people who live here obviously lead very comfortable lives, and becoming a citizen is nearly impossible to achieve. Generally, one must be a lawful resident of the nation for 30 years. 30 years? Only the neighbors, the Swiss and the Austrians, may enjoy the facilitated procedure, but I doubt that they really need it. In this instance, the prince personally considers and makes decisions about these matters. Furthermore, the percentage of foreign workers in Liechtenstein cannot exceed 33% of the country's overall population. The government takes precautions to make sure that immigrants don't drive out the nation's citizens. An absolute monarchy in the center of Europe. Wonderful. Now is the moment to take in the principality from above. There isn't a single cable car in this area but you can take any kind of bus to get to the mountains. They have terrible schedules and punctuality. I had to wait over an hour for mine rather than the prescribed 20 minutes. In any case, the sights outside the window made up for all the annoyances. To travel higher, I had to resolutely fight the impulse to get off at every stop. Eventually, the driver declared that he had reached the last station, which was located high in the mountains. I've arrived in Malibun, a little village in Liechtenstein, near the border with Austria. This place is roughly 10 degrees colder than the food areas, and the strong gusts made it feel really cold. The weather is chilly, but it's amazing despite the wind. This place is empty, the snow is melting and birds are chirping. Stillness. It appears that the ski season finishes before the middle of April, even if several slopes still have quite recent footprints. In any case, 90% of the buildings in this commune are hotels, and none of them seemed particularly filled. The restaurants were closed. The elevators were stopped, and the hotels themselves were unoccupied. Funny enough, the few drivers who passed me gave me a smile and a greeting when they noticed the camera. Naturally, it's pleasant to discover oneself in the mountains, featuring a unique ambience, picturesque chalets, and even a tiny stone chapel. one drawback. It's too cold. So, Marbon, it's time to say goodbye and head down. After reaching the nearest settlement, I got off the bus and went to take in the scenery, which included alpine peaks encircling Liechtenstein. It is lovely. By the way, from here you can observe the quietness of our shoreline, while dozens of cars are speeding along the Swiss highway. I ended up in Trisenberg this time. There is much to see here in addition to the views of the mountains. In the middle is a church that is accessible to the public and rather substantial by local standards. Near the fortifications is a little cemetery with simple but well-kept granite and marble monuments. 
Isn't it a nice place to rest in peace for eternity? Observing the town's activities from above was a fascinating experience. I was currently meandering around these tiny lanes, admiring the neighborhood chicken coops, roadside scarecrows, and drinking fountains that flow straight from the rocks. After a few hours of walk, I decided to take a ride down to the riverbank to watch the sunset, because it was too far to hike these winding slopes. Sadly, I didn't have much luck with the sunset, because there were lots of clouds indicating that the weather might get worse. And thus came the day I was to leave Liechtenstein. After a fantastic, totally free breakfast from the hostel, and the best cappuccino of my life. I idly perused the map, in the hopes of discovering something else worth seeing. Abruptly, I encountered the intersection, the location where the boundaries of three nations meet. A pretty unusual location, with only a dozen reviews indicating that it was nothing special not marked in any way. However, two people included pictures of a memorial stone that marked the special location. Anyhow, that sounded like the beginning of an amazing journey. My decision to travel to the intersection of Liechtenstein, Switzerland and Austria is suddenly interfered with the rain. The walk takes a good 40 minutes. Well... Three kilometers separate you from the closest bus stop. And if the weather had been a little bit better, that wouldn't have been a challenge. Even with the rain, I'm heading to. Luckily, the clouds eventually parted, and I started to feel really happy. Hey, парень, как там погода в Швейцарии? The only bridge where the coat of arms is shown at the Liechtenstein entry. And an elegant sign. Well, why is the sky dripping on me when it's blue above? At last the sun emerged, and I started my hike. Finally, I came to the Austrian border, discerned by a small column, a pointless column, that said absolutely nothing about the third nation. Oh no, there were not one, but two foolish columns. Austria Liechtenstein. Austria Liechtenstein. Пошел дождь! Anyway, there should be something better than a granite stone on the Swiss side. However, I'm not sure if I'll find it. Furthermore, it's pouring. I'm also running late for the bus that returns to Switzerland. Well, there is a chance that the experience won't end happily. After examining the entire embankment to no purpose and getting my feet soaked in the soggy damp grass, I chose to use the Swiss Austrian bridge to cross to the opposite side of the river. 
It's so wonderful to be in Austria. My bus is starting to worry me more and more as time went by. Where is that damn stone? If I never locate it in the end, that will be hilarious. But in the end, the road to the destination is more important than the destination itself, particularly in regards to travel. Well, turning away, I was almost ready to accept that I would never see the stone. All of a sudden... I found it, really! There's the intersection of the three boundaries. Oh my god, I found it! A little, grey, inconspicuous stone with a corroded plate. Indeed. That's it. It's been wonderful, let's leave now. Every day there is only one direct bus from Liechtenstein, for 25 francs, next to nothing by local standards. If I'm late for my Flix bus, I'll have to make three changes on Swiss trains and pay additional 70 francs. Not cool. I believe I'll take my bus to the train station. I run really quickly. One thing I neglected to consider was that I still needed to visit the hostel to pick up my clothes. I was running to the next bus again, but this time I had a luggage with me. The green monster was late. The delay was three, five, eight minutes. And then, just as I was ready to flag down a car, it finally arrived. Damn inconsiderate buses. 20 minutes later. Awaiting the flakes bus. I'm overrunning. Really worn out. With the intention of looking at the vistas along the journey, I purposefully purchased a first row seat. And I wasn't wrong. We had a fun four hours of driving. We crossed into the Italian region of Switzerland after traveling through a few cantons that spoke German. Cabello. My voyage through Liechtenstein and Switzerland came to an end at Bellinzona, one of a few Italian-speaking villages. In my brief one-night stay, I was able to explore the center, visit the observation deck, stroll around the castles, enter the long, dark and daunting tunnel beneath the fortress, eat a delicious local cake, look around the neighborhood's homes and relax on a bench while staring up at the starry sky against the palm trees. It turns out that Liechtenstein is a pretty nice country, set apart from its neighbors by a small sense of a national identity. It would be a great pleasure to stay here for a few days. Say what you will, these horses are surely worth seeing. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.